We do not own or claim the rights to the music playing in the background. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Somebody say amen. 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 Let me open with this. Um, well, tonight we're going to be talking about two ways uh, to build your faith. And we'll be in the book of Jude. Someone might say, what chapter? Yeah, we'll, we'll be in the book of Jude. Um, let, me, let me share this. God's light will always lead us right back to the path. No matter how long the detour has been, return is only a shortcut away. God's light will always lead us back to the path. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, when the Israelites heard your voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of their tribes and of their elders, Lord, they came forward. Lord, help us to hear your voice out of our darkness and come to you, Lord. Lord, your servant Job felt that he was in the land of the deepest night, the darkest dark, of the deep shadow of disorder, even the light mm. is like darkness. Lord, you restored someone who knew a much bleaker darkness than, than I have ever known, and you're going to restore me too. Can you say that for yourself? Lord, you have restored others who knew a, a darker darkness than I've ever known. And Lord, you can restore me too. If I let you. Lord, you are my lamp. Oh God, Lord, you will turn my darkness into light. Oh Lord, you keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Can you say amen? Amen. So I want to share some things with you tonight, as I always do. Uh, we will be in, in the book of Jude, a couple of verses. Um, most of us, today kids won't even know what these are. Uh, <laughs> well, they'll, they'll have a fond memory, but still, most of, uh, of us, when we were kids, we played with building blocks. Um course mine was pieces of wood today it's usually they can still get wood but normally 
it's plastic, but you had all you were able to you had all different shapes. I I asked someone today, and I was really surprised because we were in the middle of a job, and I said, "This is like putting together Lincoln logs." And they said, "What's a Lincoln log?" Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow, someone someone missed some of the greatest joys of life of having this 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 tube full of wooden blocks, and you could build stuff with it, cabins and and stuff like that. Um, anyway. The thing is, though, we, we played with these building blocks, and you could stack them one on top of the other. You could build a tower. Or you could put them side by side and build a wall. You could use them to build a house or anything else that you could, you could even imagine. You could build these things with these little building blocks. Each block couldn't be much on its own. But together... They made something great. Mm. And I want to talk to you in a little bit tonight about, about that being the same when the, in the lives of a Christian alone not much. It's interesting. Many times we, we well, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Christian, let's say, you know, what's interesting, the Bible speaks a lot about relation, doesn't it? It speaks a whole lot. About relation. And, and even in the Bible, if you go uh, in the New Testament, it talks, and the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, it talks about how to treat church members. Listen to this. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Um, First Timothy chapter 5. It talks about uh, yeah, treatment of church members. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters with all purity. Honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn how to show piety at home and to repay their parents, for this is good and acceptable before God. Now he who is really a, a widow, or she who is really a widow and left at home, trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. Okay, that's getting... <laughs> but you notice, if you think about what we're talking about here, though, this is still about a relationship. You know, if we go and we start finding mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, just uh, doing things for pleasure of ourselves, just to satisfy our flesh, and hold on, it's about a broken relationship with God. And yet... A few weeks ago, and over the last couple of weeks, actually, we've been sharing quite a bit, and, and, and it's something that's not new. It's something that Jesus had to answer. When Jesus was asked about the greatest command, he said, what did he say? Anybody? You don't know the great command? Love, love, your, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. All right, now, so here's the thing. If you don't know that command, how are you ever going to obey the command of God? You don't know the command? How are we ever going to obey what we don't know? Wait a minute. And if you don't know the command, it's probably because you don't know the man. Wait a minute. Who is, by the way, not a man, but he's God. So the first and greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And Jesus adds to it. He says the second one is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. So go here again. Someone by ourselves, we really aren't much until we are joined together with others. Building blocks. And so tonight, I want to talk about two ways of building your faith. Beginning in verse 20 in the book of Jude. What chapter? The only chapter there is for the book of Jude. Uh, uh, it said, but you, beloved, build yourselves. Some of you want to stop right here. Uh, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God. Now, see, many of us, we read that and we take that to, okay, I'm going to stay all by myself. And that's not what he's talking about. But it, it, what we need to understand is that you can only do so much by yourself. And some of us, we think we've got such a great relationship with God, we don't need other people. But if we get into the Bible, look at what it says. Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. But notice this. Keep yourselves in the love of God. G Jesus says, love God. And he says, love others. 
as yourself. That is love of God. Think about this. Uh, let, me, let me turn to 1 John. You can go with me if you like. Listen, listen to this. Uh, there's, there's a math a expression in here. Um, 1 John chapter 1. And, and I know this, I'm, I'm going to say this is not really new math, but some of us need to be renewed in this math. Do the math with me, if you will. Here it is. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, as a matter of fact, he is the light. So if, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and... The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we don't have fellowship with one another, what might that mean? What might that imply? Just so you know, there is power in the blood of Jesus. It can make us look at somebody who isn't lovable and make us love them. Look at yourself in the mirror. Because I know I look at myself in the mirror and say, well, there ain't much there to love. But I'm sure glad that God loves me. And there's a lot of things that we look in. You know, don't be judging a book by its cover. But here's what we want to do. We want to come to where we, we can identify with the inner. Someone say holy. Holy. The idea here is that we want to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. Everybody has faith. Everybody does. Everybody has faith in someone and or something. Well, no, actually, everybody has faith in someone. Faith in gravity. You know, if I, if, I were to, if I were to get up on top of this here stool and I were to step off, yeah. I know I'm going down. <laughs> I also know something else. Bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's going to be some hollering in the house. Help me, I've fallen and I can't get up, amen? And I, if I step off that ladder and I hit the ground, there's a good chance I won't by myself. So having said that, how aren't you glad that when you've got someone to help you get up? It's what, you know, the Bible talks about how, how, how the, uh, the, the labor of two are greater than the labor of one. And, and how if we are together, what happens, one, one, get, listen, if, if, you're, if you are alone and you're cold, who's going to warm you? Maybe we should start singing, all by myself, don't want to be all by myself anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be sure. Sometimes I feel so insecure. Somebody know the words of that song? Anyway, the idea here is that we have security. We have this confidence. We have this faith in a God that is, by and large, unseen. The scripture says, no one has seen God at, at, at any time. Um, and we get in the Bible. I'm not going to get into that tonight, but you look in there. Wait, that's what the Bible says. I understand. So, But we need to realize what it means to be together. So we, we were children, and um, I should have, I probably got some here somewhere. Um, some of those blocks. Someone, someone has decided they don't like blocks, so they've done hit them on me, so I have nothing to play with. Uh, but how, how many of you have ever had one block? Just one block. And here's for myself. I can still remember one of my grandchildren did this. They had one block. And she looks at me and she says, Papa, what am I going to do with this? One block. Oh, look. Oh, wow. That was foam. Check this out. I can do some things, but I've only got two blocks. But if I had a whole set of blocks... What could I do with a whole set? And they're different. These are cool. When, when, I was, when I was a kid, I didn't have them like this. Although I did thinking logs when I got older. Maybe it's because I... Uh, but, um, ooh, look at this. Man, I, I can build stuff with... Oh, my gosh, look at this. What else do I got? All kinds of shapes and sizes. I can build this here. If it'll stay on this little podium here. I can build myself. There we go. Check this out. What, what did I build? What is that? A house. It's a house. An entrance to a house. Look at that. Would you look at that now? But if I only had one block, <laughs> what fun is there in that? I can still remember it. Papa, what am I going to do with one block? You can build a foundation. Now, I did, and, and I, had, I actually had uh, the blocks too. Some of you had it. They had letters. But what can you spell with one letter? Not much. Each block by itself 
can't really do much. It's not, I mean, it, I, I'm, well, you know, I'm just glad I got my one block. Um, <laughs> but together, if you have more than one block, you put them together, you could build something great. You could build a palace. Um, so the same is true in our Christian lives. Living close to God and his people. We can accomplish more together than we ever could alone. See, at the end of the book of Jude, Jude encourages us to build our faith through prayer and community. L listen to what he says. He says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It, when we think about prayer, we talk to God. And as we communicate with God through prayer, we put our hope, we put our trust uh, in, in Him. And what happens when we do that is our relationship grows deeper with Him. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, you, now, now say it like you mean it. Amen. Like you believe it. Amen. How many of you know the more you pray, the more you find God? Let's not take him for granted. Someone said, well, God knows everything, so why do I need to tell him anything? He knows what I need even before I ask, so why should I bother? It's called relationship. I mean, well, he knows what I'm thinking. Poor man. But the idea is, he knows And if you want something bad enough, out of the abundance of the heart... Mouth speaks. Mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. So we learn to ask. We learn to, to go before the throne of grace. We learn to plead sometimes with God. Mm -hmm. So community is that is the, the relationships that we make with other Christians. Just like the having making a relationship with God. We communicate. We pray with Him. We, we, watch it. we don't just talk to Him, but we sit and we want to listen. We want to listen for Him. The same thing is in our church fellowships because community is that relationship that we make with other Christians. Community, get this, community, togetherness, builds our faith. And here's how it does it. It builds our faith by allowing us to encourage others. I, listen, I can just tell you right now, statistically speaking, our fellowship here, here in New Buffalo is about the same as the rest of the world. We all want to talk about the same thing. We all want to murmur and complain. But we really don't understand what that does to us or what it does to our fellow man. I already know about COVID-19. I hear, I hear about it from the news. I hear about it from every person. That's the first thing people think that I want to hear about. Just so you know, I don't. Now, if you want to talk about Jesus, all ears. Amen? Uh, if you want to talk about God, and you, just to understand, you know, in, in the appropriate places, because sometimes I really... Wait, I'm, I'm hanging out here. I've got live wires in my hand. But if, if, you don't, if you don't let me finish this, I may be talking to God face to face. Mm. Let me finish this. But when I'm done here, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about God. Someone told me, and I've never been able to do it. Um, maybe, maybe if I looked it up on, on the internet, I could find this. But someone said that you can start a fire by just rubbing two sticks together. Wait a second. Can you guys wait for this? Those are too smooth. Wait a minute, it's getting warm. Oh, all I'm doing is marking one up. <laughs> but someone told me that you can start a fire by just rubbing two sticks together. And you know, there's, there's truth to it. And I just, you know, I can't do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. I just, I can't do it. Maybe my wood was wet. I don't know. But um, we'll get together and our and community and our fellowshipping, here's what can happen. They can fan each other's fire. Now, the problem is we've got people who are quarrelsome. We've got people who want to pick. And, and, and then someone wants to join in and start fanning those flames. And those, stop. How about we fan the fire of our faith? How about we fan the fire of that, of that, that, burning, that burning desire we have to, to serve God and to, to fulfill his purpose in our lives and to, to be, listen, more than conquerors in all of our ways. Amen? And we need to realize that Jesus is a journey. Some of us think we've arrived. Just to be clear, 
nobody has that is here today that's hearing my voice right now. I mean, you, you haven't arrived. You're not there yet. I've got a long way to go, and my wife said amen. Well, maybe she didn't, but I was just, I'm going to speak for her. I have a long way to go. But get this, and some of you remember this, you've come a long way, baby. Um, some of us have come a long way, but even though you've come a long way, you still got a long way to go. Sometimes we're going to want to throw our hands up. We're going to say, that, that's it, I'm done, I quit. Other times, we're going to get so excited that we just want to jump up and down. In the church of God, we call that shouting, by the way. Amen. You can shout if you like. Someone say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But that's why it's important for us to persevere with the building blocks. Mm. The building blocks of prayer, the building blocks of community, the building blocks of fellowship, the building blocks of working together, praying together, the building blocks of crying together, the building blocks of laughing together, the building blocks of doing life together. Whether life is going great or whether life is going not so great at all, God has given us ways to draw strength from him and from his people. Can you say amen? amen. He's given us ways. And one of the greatest things that he has given to the world is the church. So don't go it alone. It's a jungle out there. And just so you know, most of us, if not all of us, we need to be guided through that jungle. We all, from time to time, we need someone to take our hand. And I know we can say, precious Jesus, hold my hand. Every hour we can say that. But how, how many of you have had a time when you cried out for God? And someone else who was a brother or sister in Christ showed up right in the nick of time. Mm -hmm. So don't do life alone. Start building your life today. So let me ask just a few things. And uh, for those of you who were, have, have been acquainted uh, from last Sunday, this is in our bulletin. What's one way that you've seen prayer build your faith? And it's sad when we're not doing answering these questions because... We, we don't think we need to answer them, but can I tell you, we need to answer this. What is one way that you have seen prayer build your faith? Mm. Yes. I had a person that owed me about $700, and for, for so many years, and my taxes would come due on my house, and I didn't have the, the money to pay them. All of a sudden, I go to the mailbox, and here's a check in there for that $700. That, that I thought the guy forgot completely about it, and I'd forgotten about it. And that, that, there was a check the day before my taxes were due. Amen. That, Somebody else. What, what is one way that you'd seen prayer building your faith? Gives you endurance. What's that? Gives you endurance. But mm -hmm. give, me a, give us an example. Uh, <clears throat> I've been alone for a long time. I've been fussing. Now I got a job. <laughs> you persevered to the yeah. to not, not wait a minute now you got a job no, you, you have something else to pray about <laughs> well I'll tell you a story after a while alright what's one way sis well we actually talked about this today I've been going with the kids um, and we read about Harriet Tubman today and three one of the questions is how can you have compassion for those who are suffering and how can you have compassion for those who are causing others okay. to suffer and through okay. prayer mm -hmm. okay. through we can pray for them okay. we can we can know um how, you know how can we feel sorry for somebody knowing that they don't have Jesus and if they die without him Oh, how bad that's going to be for them. And I think there's verses that relates exactly to that. I mean, think, think about this. Because uh, if, if you think about what, we're, what she's talking about, there are people who seem to be busted. Someone on my answer prayer. Amen. Well, God, God does answer prayer. And our faith is tested or challenged. When we see someone seems to be prosperous, As a person of faith. But the Bible says when you 
when you read, read well, I actually read the, uh, uh, the word that tells you about what happens there. Uh, that's why you don't get cur- cur- any kind of sense of satisfaction mm-hmm. of someone meeting that kind of an end. Do you think that it gives God any kind of pleasure for people to meet an end like that? No, it doesn't. But here again, what's one way that you've seen prayer build your faith? And the greatest one, of course, is when you're praying. You, watch this. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Yep. Yeah. Maybe you've never had this happen. Maybe you've never prayed and seen someone. It's like, okay, what's, when's the next shoe going to drop? Because they're being awful nice to me today. Sometimes we have to realize that God's at work. And, and many times we, we miss that. Is there anything that you need to take to God in prayer right now? Is there any one thing that you really need to take to God in prayer? And the whole thing is, as you go down through these, we're not going to answer this tonight, but these are things to consider. One thing you really need to take to God, because here's, here's, here's what we do. I can take care of this. Mm. FYI, regardless if I can take care of it or not, I'm always asking God to come along with me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Just because I can do this. I don't want to do this alone, Lord. I, you know, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I don't want to go alone. Uh, or like in the Old Testament. We don't want to go anywhere that you're not going to go with us. So, um, how about this? Are you part of a, a Christian community? Uh, the, a, a, a group of believers. A body of believers who meet regularly. Not just out of tradition. Not just out of ritual. But we meet not just on Sunday, but there's, a, there's this camaraderie, this true relationship that happens throughout the week. And who do you turn to when you need help or you want to celebrate? Who do you turn to when you need help or you want to celebrate? Um, it's kind of difficult. If you're all by yourself, um, you've got no one to turn to. Now, someone who is... Oh, I don't know. You say, well, you know what? I don't need anybody. All I need is God. There's some truth to that. But here's what the Lord says. Listen, I came in the flesh to show you something. I came in the flesh to, to be an example of something. You, you need something. You need someone like yourself. How many of you know that Jesus was someone like ourself? Come on now. You see, here at Lighthouse Village Church, we believe that you cannot do life alone. We still have affiliates and associates, and, and they don't attend because they think they can make it on their own. I'm here to tell you, you might make it, but you're not going to live the full life that God would have you live outside of the community of the body of Christ. So I want to encourage you, if you're a member of a church someplace else, and right now there's a lot of them that are... are, are, are uh, well, some are not meeting at all except through Zoom or Facebook or FaceTime or I can go down a list of many other things on, on the Internet. Uh, but as far as meeting in person, face-to-face, very few. We have a few that meet here. The doors are, Our doors have never been closed, maintaining that good, safe social distancing. But um, uh, and So it's, it's not exactly the same, but you know what? We're going to do the best we can with the circumstances mm-hmm. we've been out. Because I can do all things through Christ who trusts me. So, we're going to close. Let's go to prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that you have brought us together. Some of us have been brought together through the medium of, of the Internet. Others, Lord, we, we, are, we can gather together, Lord. Uh, uh, certainly, we, we have our family. We have our closest friends and our, our, our closest friends. Uh, knit community where we are still in the same community we're still gathering together but lord uh, lord we're maintaining safe distance but father we ask tonight that lord that you would in in your wonderful way move in such a way to um cause us to be drawn together that lord that you will not only cause us to want to be together but father that you will protect us Mm -hmm. that god that you will provide a means for us once again to gather in your name Mm -hmm. Because, Lord, we know when we gather in your name that there is power, that there is 
influence, that God, that our faith is strengthened. Lord, let us draw ever so much closer together, especially as we see that great and terrible day approaching. Lord, we have not seen...